what is going on youtube and y'all squad i know long time no here no see all that good stuff but it's your boy yacrates here for the review for real housewives of potomac season nine episode one <clears throat> so i'm kind of indifferent about this episode i mean it was cool left a lot to be desired i just can't wait to see like what all comes of it but we start off with a reenactment of what happened the night of <laughs> Karen's accident. I'm not laughing at that. It's just we went through all of this for that. But OK, so it's one month later and we're getting everybody's uh, reactions. One of the things that is really sticking out is I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all with some people. It seems like some people are going to be overly fixated on Karen. Which means y'all ain't got nothing to talk about, and that's gonna drive me. Um, it's gonna run me. It's gonna run me thin. Which means that the reviews are probably not gonna be that long, cause I ain't got time for the fill in the whatnot. I already gotta sit through it, taking those, and okay. So Giselle is on her way to go see, uh, you know, Karen post the um incident. Karen um says her injuries are her ribs and her ankle. So they go for breakfast. Giselle is pretty much playing producer, uh, fishing um, for info. And it's one of those where it's a way to do it without pretty much really showing that, hey, I'm really trying to be a producer. Because I'm not saying that she doesn't mean well, but it's clear that she's there because, hey, she's, you know, a producer. Um, telling Karen that, you know, these are not the actions of care of the Karen that she knows. And she, and I mean, it's one of those where we did get a flashback of Karen, you know, has saying that, you know, DUI been there, done that, got the t-shirt, no excuse. But then of course, here we are. Right. And then she, uh, asked if, you know, she's going to core or if she's going and Karen replies, you can read. And I, I love that answer where and again, it's one of those where we get it. We're here. We need to check in. We need to clock in, earn this paycheck. But at the same time, it is coming off like Karen knows, okay, this is very disingenuous. And because what it could have been is, <clears throat> and and look, since we're already here, what Karen could have, would have, should have have done is I almost kind of had like a little press release almost gotten Wendy probably could have just been Wendy and just had a sit down with Wendy or even Giselle and just literally <clears throat> just told all of what she could tell get it all out there and once that said I can't say no more you know it's in litigation or whatnot but look this is what happened da -da -da. you know even the whole you know like i'm you know going to aa i'm meeting with it like literally put it all out there because if you get ahead of it can't nobody really say nothing but if you are fighting to not share anything because yes there's only but so much she can tell then yeah you leave a whole lot to the imagination and now you're allowing people to sit here and play with your life as a storyline which she could have used the majority of this season going to therapy and doing all of that work and even some activism for drunk driving. It's a whole different way she could have spun it, you know, and unfortunately she doesn't have, you know, uh, Jesus jugs, you know, to sit here and take away from the fact that, Hey, this is a real life thing I have going on. But if Karen was smart, she would actually play in on other people's stuff to take the attention off of her. But back to this, uh, she asked, um, you know, how was Ray? And one second, my dog is cutting the food. One moment, y'all hold on. And I'm back. Um, but Karen, rather than really talking about Ray says, you know, that she's been uh, going through a lot, needs his emotional support. Uh, says that she should have spoken up about that, but doesn't blame him. And what she's dealing with has contributed to the accident. And <clears throat> what this is given is, could it be, you know, almost like a deflection possibly, but, you know, it's alluded to the fact that, you know, Karen is strong and she always shows up as having it all together. And we always say the strong friend, the one that always appears to have it together 
is the ones that you typically need to check up on. And again, with her having the title, the Grand Dame and all this other stuff, probably very hard. At the same exact time, I know it's difficult for her to open up to people because, you know, of people, you know, talking about the phone calls and the conversations. And we even hear about this later on in the episode to where it's she really doesn't have much of a support system, more or less, on the show. So, um, Giselle um, talks about a B-Day lunch for Karen. So, now we get Mia and Gordon, which I'm just going to say I feel like Mia is going to carry this season. Like, this season is probably going to be on her back. And what I and <clears throat> one thing that I can say that I can appreciate is Karen has a legit storyline. Mia has a legit storyline. I can't say that for everybody else. But back to this. So we find out that they're separated. Uh, Gordon has moved into Mia's building. Mia talks about having a sneaky link and can't review that because he's in the building. But why would you need a sneaky link when you are in a relationship? But they ain't none of my business. Mia um, feels that, you know, she gave everything to Gordon. Gordon feels like she gave a lot, but she didn't give everything or more or less at the very end because <clears throat> if that's the case, you could have just separated from me rather than running into the arms of someone else. Mia doesn't feel that that is what she did. Um, Gordon doesn't want Jeremiah to, you know, get his hair cut with ink. I guess that's a bonding thing, but also <clears throat> Gordon's whole thing is that is my son. I don't want him to be with another man getting his hair cut. Um, ink is, uh, coming in this weekend and finds out that he wants a paternity test to, you know, confirm if whether or not Jeremiah is his child. And this is one of those where it is a whole, whole lot. And I'm not even gonna lie. I really don't like the fact that the kids are involved because <clears throat> regardless, this can go real wrong, real fast. Gordon says because, you know, he never, you know, got the test, that should show that he doesn't doubt the paternity, despite the fact of what he said on camera. And let's keep it a buck. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, when people get mad, yeah, you're going to say whatever you can to hurt that person. You, like I said, in that moment, you mean it. <laughs> you may not necessarily mean it, but you're arguing and you want to win the fight, right? So we get Ashley. I'm finna keep it a buck with y'all. <clears throat> I ain't got time for Ashley. I, I really don't. I re Cause it seems like to me, the producers told her either we need motion or you off the show. Cause she's ready to proceed with the divorce and the divorce attorney says, you know, uh, she wants to do a mediation date. That's it. I ain't got no more. Wendy. I like Wendy. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm really finna get for Wendy. And, and here's the thing. Though I'm here for what is about to happen when it comes to her and her mother, we've seen this song and dance already. I got it that this is going to be the conclusion, but we can't spread this out a whole season. And I'm going to be hard-pressed if she's trying to start up a brand new business venture rather than focusing on the business venture that she already has and finding a way to merge them. But she's unpacking her office. Uh, she um, is typing up her resignation, you know, because she's resigning from being a teacher and she hasn't told her mom. <clears throat> and we know how her mom feels. And, you know, she feels a way. And again, I can't tell nobody how to feel, but this is the whole thing of you have to live your life for you, not for your mom. Your mom is a grown woman. I, and I believe what it's two of them. So she's three times grown. She's grown to her own with two kids. Let her live her life. Let her do her. She can't live vicariously through you because, yeah, having that my daughter is, my child is, yeah, that's cool. But, again, you got to do what's best for you and what's self-fulfilling. And we know that Wendy has not always felt fulfilled in doing this because she did these things for her mother. Again, this right here seems like a good two, maybe three episode scenes that we get. But there's nothing more here. And if it's drugged out, trust me, I ain't got nothing to say. Uh, we get Karen um, and her friend Vivian. She's a, a boutique owner, boutique owner, and Karen is there to find <clears throat> something to wear for her birthday brunch. And we meet uh, Stacy, that is also Karen's friend. She pops up, and we find out that she used to work for QVC. I'm gonna keep it a bug for you. It seemed like this scene was more or less to bring in Stacy, and not really for Karen because Karen didn't try on anything. But we did see um, Stacy trying on things because she was um going to a gala 
And the last thing that she wore, that red um, dress or whatever, was beautiful. Look, it looked gorgeous on her. Uh, <clears throat> Karen notices that Stacy doesn't have a ring, and she's saying this to Vivian. Vivian, I, I, I think Vivian is is good for me because she was like pretty much push her to pre to bring that up to Stacy. Like, let us not talk about. It. Come on, she right here. Let's talk about it. And we find out that um, you know, she's been separated for a year. They're headed for a divorce. 16 year marriage and you know just trying to navigate that and it was kind of clear that that's what it was going to be because as um we were getting to know stacy before this came up all the pictures of her husband is blurred out we see her child in the pictures but we don't see her husband and stacy because you know they have champagne and stacy is asking karen like oh is it okay that we're drinking in front of you which I understand the concern, but this is one of those where it seems like everybody is going to bring more attention to this than what, you know, we really need to be dealing with. But again, this is Karen's story, not mine. So we get to the party. Uh, Giselle lets us know that she's all about empathy after losing her father. And, you know, this is why she invited, you know, Wendy. I call Bull. Now, here's the thing. I got it. We lose people in our lives and whatnot. It can make us rethink things, relations and whatnot. <clears throat> but let's keep it a button. No, the real reason why is because you already know that <clears throat> you and Ashley can only do but so much. You and Karen can only do but so much because literally that is all that you have on the show is just those two. You're not cool with Wendy. Robin is off the show. You don't have Candace to go back and forth with. So you have no choice but to you know, um, getting with, um, Wendy. Y'all, excuse me, I'm sorry, my dog is over here fighting for my attention, I'm, my, my apologies. If, if I was on camera, y'all would see it, it's okay. Mm, but that's the only reason, plus I'm pretty sure production probably told her, get with the program, uh, you gonna be the next one about the dough. Cause, and again, I wanna see how this relationship is gonna blossom between her, between Giselle and Wendy, cause I don't see it. And if this is a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, Wendy, we're going to have some problems over. Yeah. So Jocelyn comes in. Mia arrives with her friend, uh, Jazzy. Wendy feels, you know, that the invite was not an olive branch, but that they need to sit down and discuss their relationship and, you know, how they got there. Wholeheartedly agree. And it was one of those where Wendy did not physically embrace Giselle. It was kind of one of those general speaks and whatnot. But I do wish in this instance that she would have spoken directly to Giselle since Giselle was hosting this event for Karen. You ain't got to like the person, but at least just, you know, make it known like, hello, Giselle. Because, again, you can all you can have with that person is hi, goodbye. You feel me? So Mia hasn't uh, spoke to Karen. Jacqueline says that, you know, she called her and Mia throws out there. Oh, but did you say she was drunk? And Jocelyn says, well, I think she might have been tipsy, but I don't know. <clears throat> now, Jocelyn, <clears throat> this is one of those things that I don't know. Like, one is it's clear that you are Mia's doormat because literally the way that you let Mia and the girls just, you know, walk all over you is crazy. But this is also one of things where <clears throat> if you have Karen that is showing herself to be a bit of a motherly figure to you, yes, Mia may be your friend, but it's clear you can't just share everything with her. And especially knowing that her and Karen had a bit of, you know, well, last season just wasn't great for the two of them. Why would you divulge that information to me unless you're trying to, you know, get back at her good graces for whatever reason? Because now that has, a, that's probably going to have Karen looking at you sideways like, why would you say that? And even if you question that, you brought it up to Mia and now Mia brought it up to the group, making you look real foolish. And Wendy says, I want no parts of this, which is commendable. And I can't wait to see what happens between Wendy and Karen, because I know Wendy is going to feel away, especially you can see right here, Wendy is trying her best to not get in that mess. So Wendy knows of Stacy because, you know, they sat on the same board, but doesn't know Stacy, but, you know, wants to get to know her. Cool. You know, I'm not going to say it was shady, but I'm kind of like, hmm, okay. Giselle uh, have names off the drinks, and one of them is a non-alcoholic, you know, being a grand dame. And again, this is Giselle being her messy self and whatnot. And again, her and Karen are frenemies. But of course, take jabs at her whenever she can. And again, can y'all tell me what Giselle's storyline going to be? <clears throat> 
I'm gonna get to what her and Ashley gonna do, but again, ain't no storyline there at first. So Giselle says that if you get an attitude at this hat tattoo, because it's called a hat tattoo party, then you must wear one of the random hats, which is a banana hat, taco hat, or construction hat. Don't nobody care. So then it's Q&A time, and Karen wants to know who her friends are. You know, this is not a time, you know, to swing at her. <clears throat> Which is cool. And again, Karen could have pulled a Giselle when it came to this where it's certain stuff that Giselle would not, or even a Robin, where they would not share amongst the group. They would still have it filmed for the show, but wouldn't share it with the group. And I'm pretty sure Karen could have done that, but I guess this is her just trying to be somewhat um, transparent, if you will. As she says that, you know, she's seen this song and dance with Karen to where, you know, Oh, it's in litigation, da, da, da. but actually you've done the same thing, especially when it came to you and Michael <clears throat> or when it was Michael versus Candace. And it was, you know, you couldn't speak on it or you didn't know. So, again, a lot of deflection and, and you coming for care, because, again, what do you have to talk about? But you're fleeting, you know, um, divorce relationship. And this failed business venture that we're going to talk about in just a little bit, like you ain't really got much of a story other than being you know, the bone collector and the bone carrier, which for her is getting real old and real stale. So the girls are hosting, when I say the girls, Giselle and Ashley, a uh, GNA fusion event, which, and Wendy said it best in her um, <clears throat> confessional, like, fusion of what? Like, the merchandise that y'all displayed last year ain't even on the website. It's given very she by charade. Mind you, ain't nobody really wanting to buy. And the only reason that people wanted to buy she by charade is because we've been hearing sh about she by charade, if I'm not mistaken, since season one of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So for us to get here is everybody was rooting for her and wanted to see her win. In this instance, I don't think anybody's trying to wear that type of shit. But, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. So, uh, Mia is, you know, giving this kind of pimp hat. And, you know, is as is she shared um, ink with Jocelyn. <clears throat> and here you go with Jocelyn having a hee-haw and explaining it, whatnot. And, again, Jocelyn, this is one of those where the, the same way you came at Mia two seasons it was two seasons ago, right? Two seasons ago is the way you should have shut that down at the table. But, again, if everybody feels that you are an easy target, they're going to continue, and you not shutting it down, yeah, it's going to make it seem like y'all have shared him and all his other stuff. Could have easily shut that down. But you didn't. I don't know if it's because you're going for punishment. You trying to, you know, be a regular on the show. I have no idea. Mia says um, Gordon is, you know, leaning on her and in. Um, I guess one weekend, you know, uh, Gordon had left <clears throat> his dirty clothes. She washed them, ink folded them, and then they returned it to him. And it's kind of almost coming off like, you know, you trying to play on him, you know, almost sort of kind of emasculate him, really lean to the fact that he an old man, dementia and all this other stuff. And and part of me feels like it's partially get back for how he handled her last season. Right. Um, Jacqueline says, you know, ink is a good fit. No, yeah, Jacqueline says Ink is a good fit for Mia. Mia and Gordon, you know, were more of a business relationship. And everybody's kind of like, oh, oh, what is that? But, I mean, again, if you know, you know. Marriage in general is nothing but, you know, a business relationship, a business contract. Marriage is rooted in that. We put love <laughs> into it, but that's never really what it was. But... You know, another discussion for another day. So Karen brings up, you know, uh, loving her and G, but not liking how the kids were being plastered all on the net. With, and um, you even had Giselle pretty much saying, I'm sorry, no, Mia gets defensive because she feels Karen is making this her fault. To a certain degree, I kind of felt that too, just a little bit. But because, again, I feel like the majority of that was on Gordon. But again, like they was fighting and that was like the very, very end. Like we literally got all of that. And again, that wasn't cool for the kids. And then Giselle tagged in, which I'm not surprised that she did because Giselle can't get nasty. But Giselle said, you know, that Mia did not protect her kids at all costs, because if she did, she um would not have mixed 
she wouldn't have gotten Gordon and Ink all intertangled like that, where kind of going back to what Gordon has said, like, if if you really wanted to be over, all you had to do was separate first and then go looking for somebody else. But, you know, having all this intermingling and whatnot. And again, it's not fair to the kids. And that even makes me question if she would have just separated from Gordon, would Ink even come on here, you know, talking about Jeremiah and paternity? I don't know. Again, I still don't like this. Because you got me saying, you know, Jeremiah is going to see this on, you know, the internet one day. He ain't even got to wait for that. Kids are cruel. And I'm more than sure the kids that he go to school with, their parents watch Real Housewives. Which means that if it hasn't gotten thrown in his face yet, I am I mean, at some point it's going to. I mean, let's just be real about it. So Mia begins to break down because she doesn't, uh, because they don't know everything of what she's going through. Jacqueline does, but they don't. She doesn't feel that this pal up is fair. And she walks off, which again, good TV. The last little bit for me helped save this episode. But again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. There's only two people with legit storylines that I even remotely care about. And that's Karen and Mia. And quiet as it's kept, loud as it is, I really don't give that much about Karen. Because I don't really see her divulging all that much because, again, it's in litigation, which means that, again, Mia, she going to need a back brace because I feel like she's going to carry this season. Like, And here's the thing. Crazy part is she didn't even carry the season last. She carried the end. <laughs> but it is what it is. But y'all let me know how y'all feel. Don't forget that um, we're doing the What Do You Like on our panel um, in just a little bit. So I hope to see you all there. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all for the next video. Peace.